Share this with you. I am about to make a U part wig for my best friend, one of my really, really good friends. And I'm going to install it for her, but first I'm actually going to make the U part wig using my brother sewing machine. Um, I'm going to have to make sure that I set this on the zigzag stitch. So for my sewing machine, I believe that's number seven on here. Um, making sure I have the right thread, mainly in color, doesn't matter what type, um, cotton or nylon, seriously doesn't matter. And while it's on my zigzag stitch, I made sure that I got this cap. Um, this is the company that I love to work with, um, to fit. And this is the cap that I'm going to be using. Now they actually have a U-part wig cap. But um, I wanted to use this because this one is actually the most easiest to find online and within beauty supply stores. And um, since I'm making a U-part wig, I need something that um, has not as much stretch so that it'll fit around her head. And I, I hope that makes sense. Too much stretch might be a problem because it ends up stretching too big for your head. So this one doesn't have a lot of stretch to it, but it doesn't have the opening. So I am going to take my scissors and I'm only going to cut right down the middle of just the end of that last U of this cap. Um, if you're not exactly sure how much that should be, maybe about three to, f well, about three inches for now. And it just kind of makes it a little bit easier for me to sew it. So I'm going to cut this. Um, you can use as much hair as you want to use. Um, in this case, I'm using two packs or two bundles. Of Brazilian um, straight hair has been colored and washed and conditioned and I have a 16 and a 14 inch so I'm gonna start with the 16 inch because that's gonna be at the lower part closer to the neck and then I will fill the rest of it out with the um, 14 inch so this was the hair that she provided for me so I'm going to go ahead and start sewing so before I start sewing, I actually cut the elastic off. Um, I don't care for them and I know how to make it fit. Considering that I'm going to probably be sewing this onto um, her head. So I'm going to cut these off. Um, not only doing that, this helps you decide if you want to make it as a side part or as a center part you can kind of shift and move it around now the bottom half of the cap usually looks like this and I make sure I sew right along the edge and then I try to keep my tracks sewn at the same distance as you see between this and this line so that um, I could be able to use all of the hair and that it it's just easier that way. It's so hard to explain. But yeah, I try to keep that much of a distance, about a finger or two apart, starting at the bottom, and then I kind of sew them a little bit closer at the top. So I make sure I have a pair of scissors or nippers, whatever, close by, because I do cut the tracks so that the edges are flat. You can sew it with, um, by doing the folded or the fold over method but in this case I'm not going to do that I will try and do that in another video but I want to make sure that this track is laid down right on top of where I want to sew and then I first want to make sure that my needle is inside of or goes through the track and the cap at the same time so this is going to take your eye and realistically some time so I got that there and then I'm gonna drop my presser foot down I'm gonna back stitch and then take it
take your time. I'm usually a lot faster with it because I've been <laughs> sewing for a long time. So, but for the sake of this video, I'm moving a little slow so you can see. So once I get to the end of that, I'm going to back stitch and then I'm going to pull it out of the, from underneath the presser foot and the needle. And then I'm going to clip that off and then make sure I clip only the threads. and that's just the first and then I'm going to go ahead and sew on to the next line so that it's not so heavy in the back of the neck because uh, for some people that could be an issue and you have most of the fullness in the top it looks better that way so I start off the first two tracks uh, this far apart so again starting making sure I lay that track right on that line uh, making sure I can get the needle down onto the track, well through the track and through the cap. Put the presser foot down, make sure that this lays nice, flat, and flush. Back stitch, and then pull it through to sew. Once I get to the end, very end if I can, back stitch, make sure my needle is up, press the foot is up. In this case, you can go ahead and cut the threads off, doesn't matter the order, and then cut the track. And you can start again. I'm actually at my last track for this wig and as you can see it's supposed to create that curve um, when you put it on a mannequin head and on your client so you see there's a curve there um, all the way around so you have to really pay attention to the track being flush to the actual cap but um, I only have so much of this left that instead of me starting at the very edge of the cap, I'm going to start right here on this seam of the cap. And I'm going to place it here and then I'm going to sew it all the way until it reaches the other side which has that seam before the edge of the actual cap. Right, so if it makes it there, uh, as you can see, it didn't quite make it there. It's kind of, it didn't make it to the seam, but it, you have to taper it off so that it's a smooth transition. That way, when you start the next set of tracks with the next um, length of hair, it'll work. So I started from the inside seam from the edge on one side sold it all the way around making sure it was flush to the cap and tapered it off to kind of end off at close to the track below it so that it's uh yeah it's a little bit hidden. all right so here we are before i go on to the next um length of hair i'm gonna put this on my wig head and this is how it should fit 
and in the very top right here with my sewing machine I created a knot I just back stitch and forward stitch a couple of times until I made a knot there because what I'm going to do is going to kind of slightly cut a curve on each side and then I'm going to go ahead and sew the rest of the tracks on this is just how I do it it makes it a little bit easier for me to sew it if I have to go in a little bit more I will but it all depends on how my tracks um, are laying as I go and I'll show you how I finish right, it off so I just finished sewing one full track around first uh, to cover the recent um, tapered off track that I did before and it was where it ended off like mid here hopefully that makes sense but I started it from here instead of at the edge and then did the same and finished it off the same way and then now that I'm on the 14th length the length 14 <laughs> I already did one full around from edge to edge to cover that. Now with the space that's left, I have this kind of smiley face space left from here down to the tracks. I'm just going to sew some tracks straight across first and then I'm going to continue the U shape. And kind of, I'm going to take this off at the bottom because it makes it a lot easier for me to keep the curve going here. I'm going to place it. Make sure it's through the cap and the track. I'm going to go forward first. Then backstitch and continue. Hopefully you could see that. I only did one straight across, so I'll do another one until that kind of tapers off. And then finish the curve that's already created there. Second one, now you can see that smiley part has gotten smaller. It's about a finger uh, length apart from the seam and the track that I just finally finished sewing um, it's slightly tapered off I do not have it started at the ends so now from this point on I am going to sew in a um, U shape and I'm going to make sure that I can make these tracks kind of sit close to each other as I get uh, closer to all right this so opening. I'm just about coming to my last bit of what's left on this wig that I can sew another track on and I am going to um, show you well not show you but tell you that I actually change the um, width of the zigzag stitch for the edge of a U part so that it it looks a lot more professional this is uh, let's see if I can put this in a little closer This is to show you the difference in the zigzag stitch that I am using. I was previously using this one for the whole wig because it wraps perfectly around the weft and attaches it very nice and flush to the cap. Now for the edge of the U part, what I use is this one which is a little bit smaller and it has a different edge finish so that you could be able to cut the excess of the cap off if there's any left so there is the difference between the the two so 
that's what I do now on my machine it, I change from seven to nine on my brother machine um yeah I need to do a video on <laughs> different sewing machines but um yeah I'm going I've already changed it to nine for that tighter stitch and I'm just gonna sew the exact same way that I've done for the whole wig So we're here at the edge. It's finished and I only have like that amount to a small amount to cut off but I'm going to give you guys a close-up of what it looks like. So I hope you can see that. That's what the edge looks like and you can see that the thread is wrapped around it to be almost identical to the way the weft is actually made the track here more so and this is what I have left to cut off and this is what it looks like up close so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off making sure not to cut the threads but cut close enough to get this off and it's almost like cutting off lace from a lace closure and there you are Trying to make sure you guys can see that it's cut. So now everything is clean on this U part edge. Oh, let's clear that off. Yep, but everything's clear on here. All right, so now that that's cut off and that's done, I still have some hair left over from um, finishing it off the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. And to make sure that I use all of this hair, I am going to place it um, to fill it in nice and neat, probably to the back of the wig because the distance or the spacing is a lot further apart than it is closer to the top of the wig. So, you know, it's a little bit um, more spacing at the bottom than it is at the top. Um, you really can place it wherever you want to. It's just so that you're using all of the hair, you're not wasting any of it. <laughs> and that's the same thing goes for clothing and fabric and all of that other stuff. But sewing a wig is very similar to me as sewing a garment. So I, I think I might place it here. But yeah, I'm just going to take that full track. I don't want to cut it anymore and just find a place to uh, put it and then I'll sew it on so for quality control Because you know I like stuff to have a good finish uh, I flipped the wig um, Under and this is what it should look like with the seams well not seams <laughs> with the tracks attached to the cap uh, I'll take my nippers or a pair of small scissors and I'll uh, look around for any hanging threads and I'll snip those off and I pay very close attention to make sure that I'm not snipping any threads that um, are part of attaching the tracks to the um, cap but that's pretty rare because this is the exact stitch you shouldn't have any hanging threads except for the threads that hang because they are the beginning or the end of your starting to sew the track onto the cap uh, I'm hoping I'm making some sense but yeah this is what I do is um, check for any uh, hanging threads and it's done <laughs> 